and uh, we talked about a few things that we want to do coming up. Uh, one of the things is a um, logo design contest. Uh, I think Tom posted that in a couple of places that we were doing a design contest uh, to try to come up with a new logo or a better logo for this group, organization, society, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you're interested in submitting a logo, if you want to design one, submit it to Tom uh, or myself. Uh, we'll be doing a um, competition with that where we'll post it out for everybody to view and to vote on uh, if we get several entries. Uh, the winner of that gets um, a sweatshirt or shirt of their choice um, that will have the new logo on it. Uh, that'll come from Teespring. So what we'll do is we'll take that design, put it on several different things out on Teespring, and then you can decide which one you want. Um, and that'll be shipped out to you. Uh, Tom and I both have shirts on today of the logo that was sent. Uh, if you're interested in those, you can go out on the Teespring site and check those out uh, and order something from there if you like it. It's just a gouge and a knife that's crossed with the, uh, the name, the International Association of Woodcarvers on it. So uh, feel free to check that out. Um, Say, see. Blake, hey, what's Blake. wrong with the old logo? Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, we just wondered if, uh, just to make it interesting and interactive, if somebody wanted to come up with something new. So, oh, um, okay. Yeah. Um, what else? Coming up speakers, we have a few people lined up. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I think a couple of them are on here today. So, uh, next week we will have <clears throat> Doug, Doug Linker. Uh, hey Doug, thanks for joining us today. Uh, Doug will be coming to us from Canada to talk about his carving um, adventures. Uh, the week after that, which will be the weekend of the 6th, we have Dave Stetson, who's one of the founding members of the Caricature Carvers of America, and he'll be on presenting to us. Um, I talked to Sarah recently, and I think Sarah is on here. Uh, she's lined up the editor or one of the editors from Wood Carving Illustrated that's going to come on and talk to us. Uh, so we have several things coming up. Uh, so hopefully you all will continue to join us and uh, join in those, those discussions. Uh, today we have Don Bentley coming to us from, uh, from Idaho. Uh, he's known as Serial Carver on Instagram. Uh, he's considered a spoon carver and a wood collector. And uh, at this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to him. Thanks, Don. All right, thank you, Blake. Thanks for asking me to do this. I don't really fit into a normal uh, category. Um, there's a lot of caricature carvers here. Um, I assume everybody can hear me. Or, or, um, but uh, anyways, uh, I, I tried a lot of different uh, carvings, but let's go ahead, and I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my um, screen. Host disabled participant screen share. Is that something that I'm that I should be able to do? Or does Tom need to enable screen sharing for me? Hey, Larry, can you help him with that? Uh, use your uh, cursor and scroll down to the bottom. The share screen. Yeah, share screen. Click on that. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, I can change that. All right. It'll take me a minute if you'll chat. Okay, um, anyways, just a little bit. I wish that my um, uh, Instagram moniker was as clever as the Clever Carver, but when I first started out on Instagram, the only thing I was um, intending to do was to share my um, swan spoons, and I did it, and that's all I carved, swan spoon after swan spoon. So um, cereal was about the, well, cereal sounded better than repetitive. Um, I, I know uh, cereal for some people it has a negative connotation, but that wasn't my intention. Um, but uh, anyway, let's share my screen, okay? And I have my So everybody can see my screen now. 
Okay, again, I'm Don Bentley, the, um, the swan spoon guy. There's people that don't follow me who um, know who I am. But, um, and this logo over here of the swan um, uh, casa from um, Spain is doing up a stamp for me um, with this logo. So I'm excited uh, about that. Um, what interests me in, in carving, I think, uh, was probably Rick Boots' show back in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, the years for his show is like the best kept secret in public television. There was nowhere on the internet, so I contacted the station, and they're the ones that told me it ran from 87 for nine seasons, and I assume that's one per year, so 87 to, uh, to 96, and that's about the time um, we had moved to San Jose, and when we lived in San Jose, they had a really big uh, wood carving um, club down there um, in, in the Santa Clara carvers and through these clubs I met Michelle Carville uh, and of course Dave I took uh, a two day from Wayne Barton chip carver and um, I took a two day seminar from Ian Argrell he's a British master carver and there's probably a couple other that I can't remember but like I told Dave Stetson Michelle took my um, carving virginity she was my first teacher and I think Dave might have been my second teacher so um, so I started with the best. And during this time, I joined a club down in Salinas. Um, Dave might remember Molly Chattel. She was an awesome lady. She invited me to their club down there. And um, I actually got uh, more out of um, um, that small club down there than I did um, uh, the Santa Clara cl cl Club. And that's probably mostly due to Molly and she passed away a few years ago and so sad that I wasn't able to keep in contact with her. We moved up here to um, Idaho in 2001. But while I was down there, somebody might recognize the Santa on the left. That was the two day seminar with Dave Stetson. Santa in the middle was done during the Michelle Carville days. I don't remember if that was with her or not. And the, um, the little guy on the right, that was with Cleve Taylor. So um, I started at the top. There's, there's, there's really nowhere to go from there. So, and I haven't done much caricature carving um, since then. Um, I did try my hand at relief carving. I had done a little bit of um, classical carving. But uh, for whatever reason, um, this Swan Spoon collection took over my life. And this started in Salinas. Um, a guy um, presented this book and he brought in some blanks. I've carved a few of these um, blanks. Um, you see the flower spoon is from the book. The acanthus leaf is obviously from the book as well as the lily. And then, of course, that day um, I chose to do the swan. Um, and, and for that, uh, it will um, uh, uh, forever live in uh, infamy. Um, at first, it just started out to be knife practice. I thought it was a good piece just to um, uh, uh, practice the knife and the gouge a little bit. And and uh, then I wanted to see what a few other um, um, species was like to carve. So these are my first 11. I wish I knew what all 11 were, but I can guess that um, one was obviously basswood. One I know was Alaskan yellow cedar. One was walnut. I think I did a maple in there. And um, I'm not sure what the um, what these others were. Um, in the beginning, I just used a piece of paper and I just glued it on the piece of wood. But I had to um, I do away with that real quick. So I did. A, I've been using a hardboard template for um, all for about the last 160 of them or so. And then um, it, it 11 looked pretty lonely. Um, and then uh, eBay was pretty popular back in the early 2000s. So I found a lot of wood through eBay. And there's a couple of local sources that I that I um, um, pretty much went through. I, I could still get a, a few um, from there, but uh, it stood at 43 for a long time and for about five years. And then um, in 2005, this was our honey locust tree. My neighbor hated it because it was taken up his driveway. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to carve him a bird from this tree that he hated? And um, uh, he loved he loved the bird. 
and, and these are actual acanthus. And I need to point out the fact that my wife did this 100% of this PowerPoint presentation. I am no good at this. I have no artistic ability. Like Larry, I can't draw worth a hill of, hill of beans. And um, uh, she's very creative and um, she's the one who took this on and I thank her for that. Um, in order to find more wood, I joined Instagram. I got a few pieces from people from all over the world and all over the country, including Australia and England. Um, um, and um, I thought, well, how else can I find some wood? I joined the International Wood Collectors Society. I sent them in a picture thinking it would just be a letter to the editor, but sure enough, they put it on the front page. It garnered a lot of attention especially from one individual and this one individual um he was like in his late 80s at the time um he turned 90 not not too long ago but um he's a wood collector extraordinary he has a warehouse of wood but he sent me 25 and then he sent me 25 more and then he said did you notice anything about what i've sent you so far I said no and he said um though, though the 50 are just a through c and if you carve these up, I will send you more. And needless to say, none of us are going to live forever. And statistically, an 88-year-old is not going to live as, as long as me. So I carved as quickly as I could to get through those 50. And um, all total, he sent me over 125 spoons. And I'm, he, he has sworn me to secrecy, but he lives in Florida. He segments wood. And I told him after he's gone, I will be naming this um, collection after him. This is a fairly recent picture. My wall has room for 148. So you remember the first one only had 11. Needless to say, I, I rearranged this like five or six times. I think every time, just about, I had to wait till my wife wasn't in the house because it's just too stressful for her. All the holes, I said, no, but you won't notice anything. I, I swear, you won't notice anything. And so far, so good. But I'm done. I'm, I, I have a basket full, of about 25 over here that, I, that I'm um, replacing with some of the more colorful ones. And I'm, I'm, I'm not rearranging this wall anymore. We'll have to move to a bigger place for that. But 148 on the wall, 172 total. And that's including four collaborations. And wait till you see that. And so why do I do this? Well, basically, I'm a natural born collector. Um, my dad was a collector. And he has the most unusual collection collection of anybody I've ever heard of. And um, um, we used to have wood Christmas trees every year. And every year after Christmas, we would burn all the um, branches. But he got too lazy. We got too lazy and we didn't want to uh, break up the trunk. So we just put them in the room behind the fireplace. And by the time they moved, they had like 25 or 30 Christmas tree trunks. And um, that was his collection. And um, I, I, we actually have an ornament from um, um, from one of those trees because they had to be thrown out. But of course, I love mallets. I don't use these particular mallets. The one on the um, lower left is done uh, from the honey locust tree. It was done by a local friend. The one to the right of that is done by Juice um, Woodworks. And, uh, and the one to the right of that is also done by Juice. I don't do uh, joinery mallets, but um, I, I figured I, I needed to get one from him. The one on the upper left was done by Reformation Woodshop. Um, oh, and I know his name, but it's, off the, it, 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 it's escaping me. And um, was this Dan Kaplinger? This, yes, it was, this middle one? Was it? Hey. Hey, Dan, good to see you. And this one here was an antique I bought for like 5 or $10 at an antique store. And of course, these are my knives. And these, uh, in the middle row, one, two, three, four, you see these Rick Butt Boots knives? These were my first two knives ever. And of course, you can't carve a swan with these knives. I am a, I carved with these two that were right below it for the longest time. But I find lately that um, this upper right, uh, Mora, is, is probably 90, oh, uh, that's a um, um, flex cut. Knife, but the one right below that, the, my my Mora, that is my um, go-to knife. I, I I, and then of course I've got a Blake Lunsford Helvey knife in here, and um, that's I've I've done a couple of 
It almost did um, Lignum Vitae, um, Blake, but I didn't want to ruin it on that. It has gone through some pretty hard wood, and everybody might recognize Runesland Knives here in the middle with the um, um, Mountain Mahogany. I sent him a box of Mountain Mahogany and pear wood, and um, he sent me this knife back. And Anyway, I, I love knives, but like Larry says, the knife does not make the maker. <laughs> I remember seeing Dave Stetson carving once, and that was this knife right next to the Mora. And sure enough, the knife does not make the maker. Anyways, I didn't carve. I did not carve like Dave Stetson. Um, this is my process. Well, by three quarter inch piece of wood. And it does say my internet connection is unstable, so uh, uh, by blanking and out. And there's my um, template down there, and um, my flex cut knives that that I use um, occasionally. And on the back, you um, uh, you will see all my hanging uh, blanks. I go ahead and commit myself. I'm gonna carve this, so I go, I go ahead and car I cut out everything, and it takes about 15 minutes per um, blank to cut out with a bandsaw and then I, I drill through the neck and then I use the scroll saw and then the uh, uh, drum sander to, to clean it up a little bit. But uh, right now I have about 69 hanging up so I do not need any wood at the moment. Um, this is my um, garage carving bench. I made this out of um, glued up two by fours and a four by and four by fours for legs. Um, whoops. Um, the really the only thing I do out in the garage is I carve out the bowl, and I carve the bowl with a pretty wide um, uh, rim on it. And the reason I do that is I I cannot color between the lines. By the time I'm done sanding, it's usually I didn't mean to make it that thin kind of moment, but um, most of my um, gouges are the 13 to 14 millimeter wide. I do, I do use um, uh, a number seven uh, bent gouge and then, I, and then I use a number eight or nine. And depending on what I use, depends on how sharp everything is at the moment. <laughs> Um, my, I can car, I can sharpen a knife, or, or, or I should say, I should, I can strop a knife pretty good, but the gouges are my my weak point, and I need a better system for that. One of my most important tools on the left hand side is this um, caliper from Veritas. Um, this this um, more than once has saved me from going through the bowl, and um, I always try to start big, and then I go down, and my bowls are still a little thick. But um, um, they're not functional. They're just decorative. And of course, my my main go-to mallet is my uh, mega mallet that my friend made me. Um, and it I don't use it for that long, so it really doesn't do much damage to my um, shoulder. I let the weight of the mallet do most of the carving. And of course, everybody can see my Charlie's Angels autograph picture from when I was a teenager. Yes. How oh, the days. Um, First thing I do, I carve out the bowl, then I sand the bowl. I, and the reason I do that, because um, I, I, I went ahead and carved both sides and I ended up having to sand more than I thought I did and ended up being too thin. So I like to um, carve and sand the bowl. Then I take it back out and I carve and I uh, bandsaw the back of the um, spoon and uh, be sure to read, follow and understand all the safety rules that come with your power tools, but um, I, I bandsaw the back anyways. And then I take it over to the drum sander and I um, finish it. And I don't always do that with the softer woods, but I do it when I, I need to finish something quickly. And I certainly do it when I um, do lignum vitae. I have used a Fordham uh, um, power carver, but I don't like using it. Um, too many bad things can go bad too quickly, and I and, and including it catches my um my my apron and it almost rolled up to my chin. Anyways, and then um, you notice that the neck and the head are still not carved, and that's about the last stage that I do here on the right. And I apologize to my wife for using a dirty towel for a backdrop, but that's how that's how it goes. And then I sand, and I sand, and I sand, and this is the finish who art way ruro, why ruro, and I can't even say that once um, fast. But somebody, people always ask me, how long does it take to do a spoon? This is the best 
time and motion study I have done on any of my spoons, and I will say that this is bare bones minimum. This was an easy spoon to um, uh, carve. It was an easy spoon to sand on that lignum vitae. The first time I took 60 grit sandpaper to it, I thought I'm going to be doing this all day. And sure enough, I, it took me like two or three sessions um, to do the inside of the bowl. But it takes about 15 minutes to cut it out. Um, 10 minutes to carve out the bowl, uh, 15 minutes to, to sand the bowl. Um, well, 15 minutes just for the 60 grit. And of course, as anybody knows, the, the better you do each stage, the quicker the proceeding stages are gonna go. So I try to carve it out as, as neatly as I can. And then I, I try to do the 60 grit. And then the rest of it only took 10 minutes. Takes me 15 minutes to do all the rough shaping, only 10 minutes to carve the wings. So an hour total uh, of whittling time to carve the wings, the neck, the head, uh, and, and the uh, chest area. And then it takes me another hour just to um, finish sanding the entire piece. So three hours minimum. Um, I, I bet it took four or five hours to do some of the hardest woods, but I, I, I since I whittled the lignum vitae, I, I know I could pretty much carve anything. Why is this here? I did log furniture back in the early uh, 2000s. And the lady I did a lot of, this is our bed, by the way. And this is the quilt that my wife made. And uh, um, she, she does her own pillowcases. But the reason I have this here is... Um, she asked me not to use tongue oil. I remember we, we talked about tongue oil a couple of weeks ago. She didn't want me to use tongue oil because she felt that it turned the pine yellow or at least it changed the color to something that she didn't like. So I, I used Danish oil. And that's the finish that I use on all of my spoons is just Danish oil. And I, don't, I can't speak to tongue oil changing colors because I never used it. But um, that's why I use Danish oil. And here's some of my final um, um, products. Notice that the segmented wood is, um, was from the segmenter um, extraordinaire from um, Florida. He sent me two pieces and asked me to send them one back. So I made a matching set. Um, apparently they'll never see each other again because he's donating it to the um, sheriff's um, boys clubs, but that's okay. Um, 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 I have probably, 30 more spoons out there in various shapes, forms, um, um, uh, in addition to the 170 that, I've, um, um, that I have in my own collection. So you'll see a, a few of my um, spoons here, like olive, bacote, zebra wood, check and tulip wood. These are some of the more um, grainy, decorative, um, interesting woods. And holly yoke was from a friend in um, England. Cocobolo, Texas Ebony, Marble Wood, and Abzelia Lay. Oh, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have Cocobolo. I do have Cocobolo there. I've never seen a Cocobolo with such um, lines on here, and I swear it's not segmented. It's all one piece, but um, uh, then that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, collaborations I've gotten really crazy um, collaborations I've done with um, four different people so far uh, the first one um, volunteered this second one is from um, Carlos Eric he's nine ho nine home worlds on Instagram I approached him I said your stuff's getting really good what do, what do you think about doing it on one of my spoons sure how much you want and I just send him the one spoon none of these cost me anything other than shipping and I sent them a gift and I think all of them sent me a gift um, uh, uh, back um, anyway the next one was Amy from um, Brooklyn Lady Wood she was getting pretty fancy with the wood burnings and it goes around the back but um, it's kind of hard to um, photo on um, both sides of it and um, uh, so <laughs> it's pretty wild and then of course the latest one got a lot of brouhaha and this was um, Kate uh, Lakes Valley design she just went crazy and I all I asked from her was to do some bling because she's been doing some bling on some jewelry and and um, 
I sent her a practice piece, which happened to be Sycamore and it's harder than heck. And this box elder is what she carved for me. And the box elder is actually really soft, but she pierced the, and the, um, the, the stem and the bowl and uh, the eye is pierced through with the moonstone. So you can see all the way through it. And um, one, two, three, four, five um, uh, stones or, or what have you on the body of it. So yeah, um, my, my next one I'm already in the works for, um, it might be, I hope, a skateboard uh, laminate. So instead of this vertical, it's gonna be the um, 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 a horizontal um, a skateboard. And that's really all I have. And a question, why my wife put a picture of an old geezer with a, a gouge fat doing a duck? But anyways, I have to talk to her about that. And my giveaway is going to be this cherry spoon that's on the, on the right here. So thank you, everybody. Um, I wanted to keep this short because I don't really have a demo today because, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, they see it. Oh, it's not a spoon. I, t I said it was a spoon. I hope everybody knows that's not a spoon. Um, anyway, a, a, com a comfort bird. So Blake, I don't know if you want to take it from here or if there's some questions. Yeah, let's, anybody go has? And, uh, let's do the giveaway now and then we can do questions after that if you want to do that. So I'll, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Tom. Tom, if you'll go ahead and do the giveaway. Well, you just give me one minute so I can put all the paper and the, uh, the names in the hat. I see Dan Carp Kaplinger. Uh, he, he is a sculptor. This guy is, um, he, he's, not, he's not doing enough as far as I'm concerned. He's, he, he did the mountain mahogany and it's gorgeous. Um, he, I got a horse head and um, um, he's done a swan um, uh, out of it. Great stuff. Great stuff. Who else is here? Sean, Simon. Simon's wood carving, right? Another great sculptor. Um, I'm not into Pokemon, but I'm really into his carvings. And he does he does other stuff other than um, uh, Pokemon, but I love his the finish on his carvings. It's something that I would I would do if I could. You've just got a Santa 2000 grit, mate. Pardon? Yeah. That seal was awesome. Yeah, it's just sanding to 2000 grit. Oh, Amy from Bison Valley does awesome sp spoons. Um, um, uh, and they're very, they're very unique. You see them, you, you know they're hers. Who else is on here? All right, quick anyway. break. I'll uh, I'll go through and pull out who the lucky winner of uh, Don's uh, comfort bird is, and it just happens to be Bison Valley. You're the winner. Oh my word! See Amy, I told you you should come. Yay! I'm glad I made it. I'm I'm yeah, and that was not rigged. I had nothing to do with the the, the choice here. So I Maybe appreciate it. Just, uh, if you'll provide your information over to uh, to Don, or you can send it through me and Tom. Either one, we'll make sure he gets it so that he can get that shipped out to you. Yeah, she's got my um, Instagram. She just needs to send that to me. Um, yeah. uh, DM that to me through Instagram. That's exciting. So we'll go ahead and open the floor up for questions. If anybody have any, has any questions for Don. I got one. What was your favorite wood to make a spoon out of? That, you know what? I've been thinking that somebody's going to ask me that. And hands down, Huon Pine. Huon Pine to me was like the Australia's version to basswood. But to me, uh, the particular piece I had was five times better than basswood even. Um, it's, it cut like butter. The grain was not a factor. If you can get your hands on who on pine and happens to be pretty well regulated. So you've got to get it from a collector or, or, or somebody who's already got that or who are repurposing something. But um, I had a, a 
Fee Glover, um, uh, Twig to the Table, um, wanted to send me some wood, and she said she put a surprise in there for me. And when I opened it up and I saw the Huon Pine, I knew that was the surprise, because that was, that was a treat. That was a definite treat. My least favorite would be red cedar. It took me three attempts to do that red cedar, and I learned my lesson that um, just because the wood is soft doesn't mean you go very fast. When a wood is soft, go really slow. And I don't know if anybody can see this. Um, I'm holding up a spoon, uh, the head of a spoon. My, the bowl cracked, and I was going to throw the whole spoon out, and I thought, well, wait a minute. Maybe I can just save the top part. And so this is my comfort spoon. Right there. What's the significance of the swan on the top? Uh, basically, it, it was just part of Shirley Adler's book. Um, there's no, there was really no significance to it. Um, it just happened to be what I carved that one Saturday with the with the club. I thought it was a good um, 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 item to practice with, and um, I was too lazy to try other things. But I did do other other shapes, and I did them well. But and then you know what? I wish I had seen this comfort bird shape 20 years ago because th this would have been a lot easier to carve than um, these swan spoons. But um, anyway, um, yeah, there's no significance to it other than they can be meter and snot when they want to, and I do have that in common with them every once in a while. Hey, Don, have you used any wood that's toxic that you have to be careful with as far as sanding? You know what? I should do all my research before I carve because, yes, I have, but I didn't know it until after I carved it. So, uh-oh, I should have. Um, uh, Pacific U is, um, has an ingredient for um, chemotherapy, and I should have been more careful about that. And there's been a few, uh, even recently, where I – even hand sanding, I probably should have used a mask because it, it, it really irritated me. And I can't remember what those, what, um, what those were, but I should probably exec execute a lot more care um, uh, with my sanding, especially the power sanding. But, uh, you know no, how that goes. Jen. I'm sorry? I think Coco Bolo has a carcinogen in the, like, yep. if you breathe in the yeah and that's another one that I carved and I found out afterwards oops so when I die early um, you'll all know why I risked my life for this collection which if anybody has a suggestion on who to um, uh, donate this to um, um, I mean I'm, I'm not planning on dying but I need to make plans for it you referenced 220 grit on your list of sandpaper. What's your normal final grit that you use? It depends on the hardness of the wood. If it's a hard wood and I think it's going to take a really good polish, I take it up to 320. And um, this comfort board, I actually took up to 600. And that brings up another um, uh, thought. If you want to know every single scratch you have in a carving, take it up to 600 because it'll show you. And then you've got to go back to the 220 or even the 120. So I, I usually will take it up to 220, a minimum, a 320, uh, usually maximum. But this one, I just wanted to make, put some extra care in it. So I just thought I'd take it up to 600. And sure enough, I have the 600, back to 220, back to 600, back to 220. And um, what I've been doing, even after the 220, is the um, Scotch Bright Pad or 4 Ot Steel Wool. I polished with a, with a scotch Bright pad, and that's what I did with this, this little guy. And I tell you, it's smooth. It's, I'm the king of smooth, if nothing else. All right, Mr. Smooth, we've got a question for you. Yeah. Um, is there anywhere that you have each individual spoon pictured uh, with the label for the wood? I, I have it on Instagram. It's not a very, I, I thought about doing an interactive website, like have a wall where you can click on each spoon and it would 
pull up another page. I'm not a web designer. <laughs> and I couldn't afford a web designer. But that's something I'd love to do someday. If, not, if nothing else. But Instagram's the only place. But uh, the problem with that is you can't really see what the species is unless you scroll, scroll through it. But yeah, I thought of that. And who's the little one? Uh, this is my little girl. She's learning to carve soap today. Awesome. I've, I've taught a few how to carve soap. That's awesome. Awesome place to start. Good. <laughs> so, Dawn, is there any wood that you would like to carve that you haven't carved yet? The 69 that I have hanging up in my, in my wall. Um, and when I've got 69, people have asked me, how do I choose what to carve? Well, sometimes it's by random. Sometimes I'll ask my wife to pick one. And if you'll notice, if you notice on my slides, all of my um, blanks are numbered. That number is the grams of weight. So that, that weight tells me basically how hard the wood's going to carve. And um, one day I just thought, hang it, I'm going to go for Mount Everest. And I did that lignum vitae and um, just discovered. But um, I choose one that I want to see done. And I, th there's really none that I don't have that I, that I, that I yearn for right now. I wouldn't know what they were. Have you done snake wood? No. No, I haven't. What about some ironwood? Have you heard of ironwood? I have carved desert ironwood. Not my favorite. But a knife did go through it. And the key is find a corner, find an edge to carve. It just, you, you cannot carve the middle of a hard piece of wood. You've got to find an edge. And you can tell by the, my shavings how hard it was to carve because they'll, they'll be really tiny, tiny shavings. And this, this last one had a lot of, um, 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 I wouldn't say tear out, but it was, it was more brittle. It was, uh, so it, it didn't have like very smooth chips in it. Yeah. Is there any that you've uh, started to carve and then just given up on because it's just too much? No. I ha no. Um, I used to think that maple was the hardest thing that I would ever carve. To find out that maple has a drinker rating of around a 1,400. And I've carved three species so far that are over 4,000. Jinka hardness. The desert ironwood, I believe, was one. Vera wood was one. Um, and I never have to carve a hard one again. Um, and granted, I'm only carving one piece of wood of an entire species, so that doesn't make me an expert on the species. But I, I never have to carve another lignum vitae again either. So if I understand it rightly, um, for what you're saying, you're still using your knives to carve the harder woods, right? You're not switching to chisels or anything. Because I know when nope. I'm carving hardwoods, I basically just switch to chisels because I find it a lot easier. You just stick to your mora? Yes. Yeah. I By the time I'm carving the head and the neck, I feel like using a, a, a gouge would be putting too much torque on a very fragile part of it. So I just, I, yeah, I, I've used the Mora and it goes, I, I, and I have used the, um, the Lunsford for the head and uh, neck area. And, um, uh, and of course, uh, um, uh, the Runeslin uh, knife as well. But yeah, I'm a, um, I'm a slowed guy all the way. And do you find that knife selection depends on what, hardness of the wood is or do you just use the same thing no matter what i the hardest it is the harder it is i'm going to use my mora because the mora um dollar for dollar ounce for ounce is probably the best value out there i think they only cost 20 dollars uh, i'm not sure 20 25 dollars at the most whereas some of these others they cost a lot more and i'm not going to ruin a lunsford 
on a, on a hard one. So the Mora, it's a, it's a workhorse and I can keep it pretty sharp. I really like the Scandi grind. I, the secondary bevel, I, uh, I don't do well with secondary bevels. Yeah, I do, what, what I, I find on the, I find the Scandi grind is a lot more, a lot easier to use on those harder woods anyway. A um, lot, lot easier and you don't yeah. necessarily break the blade as quick. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's a thick, uh, it's thick on the, on the, on the back, but it's a relatively thin blade and it, it, it does quite well in that neck region. And uh, sometimes, you know, my wife can tell where I'm working on the swan because sometimes it, it serves as a scraper. Don't tell flex it. cut, but that's what, that's what I use my flex cuts for. Oh yeah, it, 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 it's, it's like neat fingernails on a chalkboard, but I'm used to it now. Yeah. So I didn't want to go too long because I knew that all I was doing was um, talking today. I did. Uh, nobody wants to see me suffer carving. Um, I, I'm. I. I envy Dan who can carve in front of people, but I. I. Uh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. And and one of my memories it's, of it's Michelle. Go ahead. It's nerve wracking when you're carving in front of people. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I remember Michelle was she would pick up somebody else's knife, so she wasn't familiar with the knife. And twice she really got herself. She got herself good. So. Uh, second time, I said, do we need to have an um, ambulance standing by? No. But she's a painter extraordinaire to find out five years later that she changed all of the methods that she taught me. So the bum. You ever think that you'll carve all the woods that you want and transition out of carving swan spoons? Absolutely. I don't want any more wood. I'm done. I I, I don't want I don't want any more wood. Um, 250 is my goal, and if I carve everything, I'll have. And my wife is applauding. Whatever. My uh, I, I have uh, 240. If I carve everything that I have, I'd like to get to 250 and then just call it good. Call it good. Yeah, that's a good question. No. Do you have anything uh, planned for what you'll carve after the swan spoons or? Anything. Anything. I, I kind of like the um, relief carving. And I, I know you, you tried that this, this last time, but you only tried it once. I have to point out. But um, I, I want to try relief carving again. I enjoyed that. I like pictures. I'd, I'd love to do a mantle and a relief carving. I think Sean should try that too. Pokemon mantle. <laughs> well, Don, some, if somebody wants to get into spoon carving, what resources would you recommend for a new carver? I'd recommend that same book. It's out in, a, in a, at least the second edition, Carving Spoons by Shirley Adler. Um, hmm. That's a good question. I haven't read many um, m uh, many of the recent books. Does anybody have any recommendations? Over in England yeah. here, Barn Spoon is um, a really good uh, one to go for. He's got a few online videos and he does like a, an online school as well. So you can follow along with him and other teachers. He's pretty good. And uh, yes. Dave the Bodger. Yeah. Hmm. Pinewood Forge up in Minnesota with Del Stubb. He uh, not only makes the knives and uh, things, but uh, his website is fantastic for linking people to spoon carving. Yeah. I would encourage anybody, if they just want to uh, carve for the very, very first time, just start with a simple spoon. Start with a, it uh, doesn't have to be a decorative spoon, start with a simple spoon. And if somebody wanted to carve spoons for the rest of their lives, there's no limit to what they can carve. There's relief carving, chip carving, um, the cold roasting, wood burning, there's all kinds, you could do a caricature carver, uh, carving spoon. 
I don't think I'd want one of um, Dave's um, characters looking at me while I'm eating, though. Yeah. Another fun one I follow on Instagram is um, Jane Spoons. Does, uh, I don't know if you can see there, like folding spoons. Which that is looks familiar. Fun. Yeah. Hey? Who, yeah. Who was it again? Uh, Jane Spoons. Oh, yes. She does folding spoons. Yeah, she does. She's got a couple of books out as well. But yeah, they are quite oh. fun. To okay, I should look at her up again. So, Don, you, do you use these spoons or do you just hang them on the wall? These I hang on the wall. I have made a lot of uh, kitchen utensils. I've sold a lot of them. I've had people tell me they're the best um, uh, spatulas they've ever used. Um, I don't enjoy making them because I use the um, sanding method and I hate the sawdust. But I, and I've also done a couple of eating spoons and that's fun and I, I like to explore that a little bit more. Some, so, uh, and again, you said your 250 is your goal? Yeah. Why? Is it because it's a round number or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can't end with 241. It's got to be a round number. It just blows me away that anybody would carve the same pattern over and over and over. I and know. Over and over and over and over. <laughs> but you know what? These green wood carvers, you, you look at what their output for a day is, and they've done 10 spoons that look absolutely identical. And that's all, that's all they did for the day. And the same species. So at least mine has, has a different species. And I try to look at it as um, I'm unveiling the, the, the species. I don't even think about the pattern much anymore. But as for how horrible I am at drawing, I always draw the head on it so I can outline it with my knife. And I swear, every time I draw it, it looks hideous. It looks like a, a prehistoric bird or something. And how am I going to make something sense out of this? But um, it, I, I guess I draw better with a knife than I do with a, um, with a pencil. But, but yeah, I, I, I am good with repetition, but I'm not going to name my moniker rep, Repetitive Carver. <laughs> All right, we've got another question for you. Yeah. Uh, so those decorative spoons behind you, I, it, it's hard to tell how far back they are. What is the size of those? How long are they? from? They're about 11 inches. Okay. It's wow. almost 11 inches. Think about a normal book a normal uh, uh, size book. And that's just happens to be the size that she did her pattern. And like I said, I wish she had done it smaller, but it just happened to be the first thing I carved and I'm not recarving anything ever. But good uh, question. Yeah, they're huge. They're huge. I mean, they're, they're, as, they're as big as, they're, they're as tall as my head. Oh, wow. Yeah, one one little girl. In fact, Fee, Gl Fee Glover's little girl wanted to use this for her breakfast spoon, and I'm thinking, two spoonsfuls that'd be the whole bowl. But yeah, and I've got some special woods. I've got some wood that um, I've got a cypress that the Axe Man show um, from Florida. Um, he he um, brings up um, old cypress from the bottoms of rivers and lakes and stuff like that. Um, this spoon, when I counted the rings and approximately when he dug it up, I think the tree goes back to the time of Christopher Columbus. It goes back to the 1400s, 14, 1500s. So it's pretty neat to carve a spoon that's been around for, for that long. And I have another uh, longleaf pine from back east and it was from a building that was built in 1905. And I counted its rings and it went back to the 1700s, at least. And here in America, that's our history. Well, Canada too. She wants to ask something, Dan. I, I, I can see her head. I see her mouth moving. <laughs> she doesn't even know I'm looking at her, does she? Ah, uh -huh, now she knows. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Cute. Yeah, keep her carving. What 
<laughs> Any other questions for uh, for Don today? Thanks for having me. I like Blake said, this is different from what anybody else does. And like what Dave says, who in their right mind would do this? Me, and I'm not of my right mind. Well, Don, we appreciate you joining us today and uh, presenting to us. I think it was very valuable uh, information. I've got my spoon with me that I value yes. quite a bit. So and what is it again? What's that? What is it again? The spoon? Yeah. What species? I don't, I don't Dude, remember. You're going to have to tell Dude, me. Rocky Mountain Juniper. That's right. Rocky Mountain Juniper. My cousin brought that up from um, uh, uh, New Mexico. And it grows all the way up to Utah and Idaho. So the ones on the wall are not all, the only ones he's carved. He's carved a few extras. Yeah. Right. Yep. So one yeah. of the cool things about your carving experience I mean, you have people who have shared in your experience by giving you wood, sharing wood with you, and most, yeah, I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a great point. This, uh, whole, this has become the most social thing that I have ever done, and I'm not the most social per person in the world, but um, like I said, people who don't follow me know who the Swan Spoon guy is. And I've gotten wood from um, all over the world, from people I, I hardly know, so, some from people that have become really good friends. And um, um, I, 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 could, I don't think I could go, I think I can go just about anywhere and visit with somebody that I know from Instagram. And that is a great community, very helpful, very um, kind, very, um, very nice people. And uh, like I said, all four collaborations have been without any cost to me. And I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. And All right. Well, thank thanks you. again, Don. If anybody wants to reach out to Don, feel free to contact him on Instagram. Are you also on Facebook, Don? I am on Facebook. I don't do a whole lot, but my name, Don Bentley, you can find me. Okay. Reach out to him at either place. Um, next week, we will have Doug Linker on at the same time, 3 p.m. Doug, we look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, and again, the week after that, we'll have Dave Stetson. Um, so make sure you check back with us. If you would, share this opportunity with other carvers, spoon carvers, chip carvers, whatever it may be, character carvers. Uh, have people join us. Uh, it's pretty uh, pretty valuable information. And again, we do this for you all during the, uh, the times of this uh, pandemic. So um, take the opportunity to come on and, and join us and uh, learn more about carving. So. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you again next week at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you. See you, everybody. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Cheers, Don. Thank, Thank you, Don. That was great. Thanks, Don. Good to see you again. Say hi to Michelle. Will do. Thanks, Don. Great. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Tom and Blake, for doing this. Hey, thank you, Don. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Great presentation. All right. Love Fest over. Um. <laughs>